Traditionally, this fourth Sunday of Easter is known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Each year, the church presents us with our Lord's beautiful description of himself as a shepherd who has tender and merciful love for all his sheep. This image of the Good Shepherd is rooted deep in the Old Testament because the prophets and the psalmists, God is the shepherd, the people of Israel, his flock. Israel's priests were also shepherds entrusted by God with feeding his people and guiding them in the ways of holiness and service. In today's gospel, we see how these images are fulfilled for us in Jesus Christ and his church. Jesus is the good shepherd promised by the prophets and sent to God's people who were left like sheep without a shepherd. We understand this image from the Old Testament and why the church is always considered the Holy Father, the Pope, the bishops, and the priests to be shepherds. They are entrusted with leading, feeding, and healing the flock of God in the name of Christ. I believe we've all heard at one time or another the 23rd Psalm. And as we finish listening to it, I'm sure we hear the words of the psalmist. But yet, do we know the psalmist or do we know the shepherd in the psalm? In God's gospel, we hear my sheep will hear my voice, I know them, and they know me. And again, and again, and yet again, what we hear in the gospel is, I lay down my life for my sheep. This states very clearly to all of us, Jesus is always more concerned about us than about himself. And as his sheep, we too need to be concerned for each and every one of us, his flock. How could we even begin to think that he isn't concerned about us in any way? Yet there are times when the shepherd is truly hard and difficult times for all of us. When I first applied to the diaconate program, I was told to wait until the program was reinstituted by the Diocese of Cleveland. I really thought at that time God was calling me to be his servant to his flock. But God had a better plan. When God sent me to men's retreats during those years of waiting, I thought to myself, God, is this really your plan for me? I thought I had heard you call me to the diaconate, but God had a better plan. I thought I had my life mapped out. It turned out to be five years of waiting and praying, five years of waiting to reapply to the diaconate program. Perhaps not one thing I'm doing today would have been part of my original plan. You see, God had a better plan. He wanted to shepherd me. He sometimes had to take me out of a comfortable position that I really wanted and place me somewhere else. And what I saw as rejection was really God shepherding me so that I could be what he wants me to be. Even now, almost three years as being a deacon, I cannot believe I have the privilege of being on this very altar every Sunday, serving the God who shepherds you and me. We truly have to let the shepherd shepherd us. Sheep trust their shepherd. They understand his voice and the behavior of the person who is looking after them. 
We don't know tomorrow. We can't see tomorrow. The shepherd can see tomorrow and the next day, the next day for all eternity. And if we allow ourselves to be shepherded, he's always going to lead us to that everlasting life. There's nothing you and I can do today that God isn't thinking of us. He doesn't want us to be led astray of his ways. He truly wants to know us each and every day. Every Sunday we gather in these pews and witness the greatest ongoing miracle in human history. God giving of himself, his body, and his blood. This Easter season, with the fragrance of the Easter flowers still fresh in our minds, the flowers finally blooming outside in spring, the hallelujahs on our lips, yet we cannot forget the hard dead wood of Calvary. Today, when we go and receive him, let the shepherd enter your heart. Be still. Close your eyes. Let Jesus hold you. Let him put his arms around you. Put your head on his chest like the little lamb does with the shepherd and listen to his heartbeat. Let this happen every day of your life. And then when you do this, you let Jesus hold you. You'll come to know the shepherd. And when you know that shepherd, you can trust that he will shepherd you, that he will protect you, and that he will lead you by the still waters. And as leading, you will one day bring yourself to everlasting life. May you know the love of God now and forever. Today is also the World Day of Prayer for Vocations. As we publicly fulfill the Lord's instructions in Matthew and Luke, Pray the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. While appreciating all vocations, the church concentrates its attention this day on vocations to the ordained ministries, the priesthood and diaconate, to the religious life in all forms, male and female, contemplative and apostolic, to societies of apostolic life, to secular institutes, in their diversity of services and membership, and to the missionary life. Amen. <laughs>